Medi-Cal monthly income versus covered California annual income. Who decides? Hi, I'm Kevin Canals with insuremekevin.com, and many families feel they have been targeted by Medi-Cal because the county eligibility worker doesn't understand their covered California income estimate. And there is some legitimacy to that sense because Covered California and Medi-Cal have different rules for viewing a person's income and eligibility. First, Covered California wants to help you make an accurate estimate of your annual income for the year because they want to provide you with a health insurance subsidy that closely tracks with your income. They don't want you to have to repay excess subsidy back to the IRS because you have erroneously underestimated your income. You receive too much subsidy and then you have to pay it back to the IRS. Medi-Cal, their goal is to verify monthly income for the purposes of eligibility into Medi-Cal. And if they can't verify it or they don't understand it, then they just kind of wipe it off and just flip people into Medi-Cal um, without sometimes very much argument. They just go in and they just cancel Cover California plans. So let's look at uh, Lisa. Her income, she just lists as $60,000 for $65,000 for a 401k distribution. Now, this is actually a conversion of 401k money into a Roth IRA. And that conversion triggers a taxable event that must be reported to the IRS and she must pay taxes on it. And that's what Calif Covered California wants to know. They, they wanna help you grab that because that's the type of income that um, if it's not properly accounted for in the Covered California system, then you've underestimated your income. However, Medi-Cal uh, conversion, what? No, this isn't, doesn't show up on a monthly checking account. We don't see a pay stub. We don't understand how this works. So it doesn't happen. But it's very real for Covered California and the IRS. And if Medi-Cal doesn't like, understand, or comprehend a person's Covered California income estimate, then they just terminate the plans. Now, Lisa's income, that may have just been one entry that was an aggregate of other income streams. I believe she had a part-time job. Uh, someone else in the household had some other income from interest. and But they just put it all under one income entry. And Cover California is fine with that because they actually go out and they check the estimated income against a federal database for the last filed AGI. And if it's, it's close, it, it's fine. They, they go forward. Um, but Medi-Cal doesn't look at that. They don't understand some of these income streams on a monthly basis. Uh, in particular, like interest that you receive or dividends, capital gains, those 401 conversions. Some of that income you don't even know about or you can't necessarily accurately quantify until the end of the year when you get your statement. And sometimes this interest and dividends are just rolled over into mutual funds. You don't ever actually receive the cash. And for Cover California, that's fine. It's a taxable event, it needs to be captured. But for Medi-Cal, they just don't necessarily understand how all of that is working. There are some sharp uh, Medi-Cal County eligibility workers. They understand some of the taxable income and they can help you through the process. Because when you look at um, someone's 1040 form, because for the income for Covered California and also Medi-Cal eligibility, they're looking at the modified adjusted gross income, which is the AGI plus Social Security retirement and disability benefits, tax exempt interest, and foreign earned income. And that all goes into making that estimate for the subsidies. But again, some of those, like the tax exempt interest and whatnot, that sometimes it just doesn't show up on a monthly basis and Medi-Cal doesn't know how to handle it. Now, Medi-Cal will only review someone's household income if there is already a dependent child in the Medi-Cal system 
or if the family uh, has their case has been sent to the county by Cover California because the income has slipped below the Medi-Cal threshold. And, and that happens uh, quite often. The federal poverty level for determining Medi-Cal eligibility increases every year. And if you're not necessarily paying attention to your income in Covered California, that federal poverty level can creep up. And then all of a sudden, when Covered California passively renews your application into the new year, there's a higher federal poverty level, it triggers the Medi-Cal review. Cover California sends it over to the county, and that's where the pain comes in for many families, and they feel targeted. I didn't, you know, they're thinking, I didn't do anything wrong. What, why am I being punished? I just need to update my income, leave me alone. That's kind of the, the problem with the system with Covered California and Medi-Cal. So if you have any questions or comments, you may leave those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not a tax advisor. Um, I do help people get to the best estimate for their income within Covered California to try and avoid these issues. And um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But we do our best to try and keep people within the covered California subsidy range. And if they need to go to Medi-Cal, that's what they need to do. But sometimes there are income issues that needs to be explained to Medi-Cal and that can be a difficult conversation if they don't understand what a 401k conversion is. So for Insure Me Kevin, I am Kevin Knauss.